Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Apparently, y'all liked my last Pixie GS video. It got a lot more likes and comments than any of my other videos in a very short period of time. So let's, let's keep going for this. Tonight, we're gonna cover drag and drop. It's one of the most interactive ways when you interact with the interface to feel like you're part of it. You're actually clicking and moving things or kind of grabbing things. It feels very natural. We're gonna do that with a button, drag and drop, that kind of thing. And then we'll show you how to do actual animation. Canvases are 2D things. Most of those built-in things for buttons and whatever are there, but the animations are changing what pixels show frame by frame to give the illusion of motion. And if you're doing one thing, you're doing many things, you're gonna use a game loop. And that game loop that's built into Pixie is called the ticker, built upon the browser's request animation frame. So the most efficient drawing, browser has time to draw it, call you and let you know, hey, Time to paint pixels. Pixie's got that built in for you. It makes it really, really simple. So let's dive into the code. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Morgan. Our button right now, you can click on it and see some of the output in the console down below. So if you click, you'll see the word yo as many times as you click it. Let's make it so if we click and hold or touch and hold on a device that we can drag this guy. Right now, if I click and then drag out, it's just registers the mouse down as a click. So to do that, we're gonna add some more events. Now notice we can do this multiple times. We're gonna do pointer down again. Instead of adding an inline callback function, let's go ahead and reference something out. So we'll say on drag start. When you do the pointer down, when you actually click, that's the pointer down, it'll handle both the touch down and the mouse click down. Notice how it kind of returns itself here. So we can just do a dot on and do yet another event, which is kind of a nice convenient way to just dot, 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 pointer up on drag end. When you lift up your mouse, it's over. We are done dragging. But there's another one that comes up in strange situations, which are cray. So we're gonna cover that one with the exact same thing. It's pointer up outside on drag end. We're gonna use the same function for both of these. If you let go of your mouse or you let go accidentally outside. And the last one is while you're moving your pointer, if your mouse is moving around, what's what's going down? What's gonna happen? If we're moving it, we're gonna say pointer move and call on drag move. We're gonna need some state for this. So we're not gonna write any pure functions. We're just gonna make it work. Before we do these, let's go ahead and define these functions up here. We'll say const on drag start. On drag start, just like a lot of other interactive events, gets events. So if you click on mouses, you do keyboard kind of things, Pixie will give you an event. It gives you special events though. They're not just normal browser events. They actually give you some nice metadata on it that has to do with Pixie. Because again, these are things inside of a canvas. You don't have the normal DOM chain of events bubbling up. They kind of emulate that for you in a wonderful way. You still kind of get the same interaction model of clicking on things and the mouse bubbling up, but not exactly the same. So our button, we need to store some data. This data that comes to the event, it tells you things about where it is, where your mouse is and things like that. So we're gonna use that to do some pointer math, pointer being X and Y location. We're also gonna set a flag and say, hey, we clicked on this thing, we're dragging. Dragging is true. So when I say flag, I just mean Boolean. We click down, we're dragging, we're gonna turn it off when dr the drag ends. So when drag end, man, I can't spell tonight. I can't spell ever. Running joke, folks. Except it's not funny, it's sad. So when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and delete that data and we're gonna set that drag and equal to false because we don't need it to be true anymore. When you click down, it starts and it gets the data and captures it. It says, all right, we're dragging. When you let go, it deletes it. It says, all right, we've stopped dragging. The main dude who needs this is the move. He's the one who kind of animates the button going around. And this kind of event is outside of a game loop. It's actually handled for you. So on drag move is, is just called often and often. So if we say if button is dragging equal equal true, if you are in fact dragging, cool, let's go animate you. This is fired whether you are clicking or not. It is an independent. It just means the pointer is moving around the screen or your fingers pressed on the screen and moving around. If you are moving, let's go ahead and get the new position. So if you know any pointer math or geometry or even some kind of advanced algebra that should look pretty familiar. We're gonna take that data and we're gonna say, get the local position based on my button's parent. Within the coordinate space of the stage, we'll explain coordinates later. But if you imagine up here is X and Y of zero and all the way over here is a large X, but it's still a Y of zero. And then positive Y is actually down. So down here would be nine, nine, nine X and nine, nine, nine Y. Yeah. Yes. Nine, nine, nine. I think this way is positive for both numbers and this way is down to zero. And if I were to go off screen, it'd be negative. It's kind of a cheap way to hide things is to do negative. Now that we got a new position that's based on our mouse, where's our mouse going? We're gonna set the button to that X and Y position. Put the button's X to the mouse's X and then 
put the Y position to where the mouse is, and that way it'll always follow your mouse. To drag, so when we click, we can actually move it around, and it, notice it's pretty smooth, not bad. If we let go, it stops being dragged. We can click over here and drag, nothing happens, but it's all by here. And notice that we're also allowed to have two pointer downs. So we still got our original click down, but we can also do different functionality for the drag start, which is kind of nice to have multiple callbacks. Now, the last thing we want to do is deal with the game loop. Pixie gives you kind of a game loop of generic ticker instead of like the drag move, which is built in, that you can do all kinds of stuff. And it gives you the delta of how much time has passed since the last time it called. And that way you can guarantee no matter what device, a really fast one or a really slow one, that your game always runs at the same frame rate. Might not draw as pretty on slower devices, it might only draw once or twice per frame, but your time will allow you to do accurate game math. If your button is in fact dragging, right, you click down, ro rotate it. So we'll say rotation is 10% of whatever the delta is. So this will constantly increase because the time constantly increases over time, hit save. Now when you drag it, spin, spin, sugar. Now notice how it's in the middle here. Watch what happens when I click out here. There's how the mouse is outside. <laughs> that is why we need mouse outside. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use the game loop in Pixie and drag and drop using the pointer events.